Okay, going to be working on 10.4, uh, sorry, 10.5, which is the section on um, equations of lines and planes, <clears throat> a very important section. And we're going to start out with number one, which is a series of true and false questions. Um, I thought about maybe just showing you one of these or two of these. But I think I'll just talk about all of them. So let's discuss this. The first problem um, says, part A for number one, um, two, true or false, two lines parallel to a third line are parallel. So two lines that are parallel to a third line are parallel. So let's say we have two lines that are parallel. So we have two lines. The fact that they're parallel means that they point in the same direction or possibly in opposite directions. Um, they just have to be scalar multiples of one another if you look at like the vector that points in that direction. So the direction of this line must be a scalar multiple of the direction of this line. So if, if these two lines are parallel to a third line, that means this this one is parallel to this one, which means it's a scalar multiple. The direction of this is a scalar multiple of the direction of this. Then this line is also parallel to this green one here. Then it's a scalar multiple. The direction of this is a scalar multiple of that one, which means that these two have to be scalar multiples, which means they're also parallel. So um, it's true. Now part B says two lines perpendicular to a third line are parallel. So if you have, let's say you have this green line and you have a line that's perpendicular to it and then you have another line that's perpendicular to this green line, does that mean that these two here are parallel? Well, that's pretty obvious that that's false. So look, these two lines are parallel, I mean perpendicular to the green one, but uh, not parallel to one another. So it's false. C. Uh, two planes parallel to a third plane are parallel. This is true. So if we take, let's say this board is a plane and I have another plane that's parallel to it. So it would have to be like this sheet of paper. It would have to be parallel. And if we have another plane, which uh, is this, another plane that's also parallel to this board, then it must also look like that. So these two planes must be parallel to one another also. So that's true. Um, D, two planes perpendicular to a third plane are parallel. So if we have this plane again, right? And I have a plane that's perpendicular to it. Let's say that, okay? So remember this sheet of paper, I'm just gonna come in. Let's say that's perpendicular. And I have another plane that's perpendicular to this board. Does that mean that these two have to be parallel? And you can see pretty obviously here, if I just turn this one like this, this plane is still perpendicular to the board. This one's perpendicular to the board, but these two planes are not parallel to one another. So that's false. E, two lines parallel to a plane are parallel. So we'll do this again. We'll use the board as a plane. I have two lines that are parallel to the board. So let's take this line here and I'm just going to flatten it out so that it is parallel to this plane. And then I'm going to take another line and let's say like this, it's also parallel to this plane. Uh, but these two lines are not parallel to one another. So that's false. Um, that was E. F, two lines perpendicular to a plane are parallel. So if I take this plane and I give you a line that's perpendicular to it, it's this, then I give you another line that's perpendicular to it, let's say this, then there's no way I can move these around. Um, these are always going to be parallel to one another. So that's true. G, two planes parallel to a line are parallel. <clears throat> so let's take, let's take the board as being a plane. Um, 
and let's make it par this plane, let's make it parallel to this line. Okay? And now let's take another plane, I'm going to tilt this, another plane that's, that's parallel to this line, which would be this. Okay, notice that they run in the same direction. And when I take this and flatten it out, it's in the same direction as that plane. These two planes are not parallel, so that's false. Um, H, two planes perpendicular to a line are parallel. So here's a line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this plane be perpendicular to this line. Okay. And then I'm going to have another plane that's perpendicular to this line. Now the only way I can do that is maybe if I put this on the top. That's the only way. And so notice that when I put this here, this plane and this line are, are perpendicular. Uh, this plane and this line are perpendicular. But this plane and this plane are parallel, so that would be true. Again, it was saying two planes perpendicular to a line are parallel. I, part I says two planes either intersect or are parallel. So if I take the board as being a plane, and I imagine a plane that's parallel, um, a pl another plane, either these two planes are parallel to one another, which means that they, um, they run there's a little gap between them and um, they never intersect each other. Or if they're not parallel, I tilt one a little bit, then eventually this plane will come in and intersect that plane. So two planes are either parallel or um, they intersect each other. That's true. Um, F says two lines either intersect or are parallel. So if I have two lines here, right? They could, of course, intersect each other, right? Um, they could be parallel, but are those the only, only possibilities? Well, how about this? In three-dimensional space, these two lines right here, okay? So I've instead of hitting each other, I just raise this one up a little bit. These two lines are not going to intersect each other, and they are not parallel, as you can tell. So it is false. Part K says a, pli a, a plane and a line either intersect or are parallel. So a plane and a line, here's a plane, here's a line. If I just run this line and bring it off the board, then they are parallel, right? So they won't hit each other there. Or I could possibly tilt the line a little bit and then eventually that line would go and punch a hole through the plane. And there's no other way I can do this. They're either going to be parallel or at some point they're going to hit each other. So the, the answer for that one is true. A plane and a line either intersect or are parallel. All right, that's just foundational stuff. Um, let's move on to number three. So number three, we want to find the vector equation of the line. Oh, and the parametric equations for the line through the point let's see they give you a point 2 2.4 3.5 and parallel to the vector 3, 2, negative 1. So remember, um, when it comes to lines, um, vector equations of lines, we need, we need two things in order to determine the vector equation of a line. I'm going to put it up here. The vector equation of a line, R, T, equals the vector R naught plus T V. Um, let me make sure that's the same formula I'm using in the notes. Okay, yeah, that works. 
All right, so <clears throat> R naught here is a vector and it represents In, in two-dimensional space, it's easiest to show. If I have a point that's on the line, R0 is the vector from the origin to that point. In other words, it's just a point on the line rewritten as a vector. And then V in the problem is the direction of the line. Okay, so that's some other vector that shows me the direction of the line. And then, of course, the line extends forever in both directions. So this is our V. So that's what we always need in order to um, determine the vector equation of a line. We need a point that lives on the line, which we will convert to the R0 vector, and we need a direction of the line, which we will replace right here with V. Uh, we, we will put in here for V. So what do we have here? We're given a point on the line right here. Okay, so we have a point, good. And I must be parallel to this vector which means that my line must run in the same direction as this vector runs. So whatever this vector is, 3, 2, negative 1, whatever it is, my line must run parallel to that. So these two direction vectors are, are um, equal, which means I can use this for my V. And so it's just going to be a simple plugging, plugging in here. Um, R naught is the vector, which is this point, converted to a vector. And then, of course, V, the direction, is 3, 2, negative 1. Now, I can use any scalar multiple of this, but I'm going to just use the vector itself. So now I just come over here to write down the vector equation. So the vector equation is going to be R of t equals um, R naught to 2.4, 3.5 plus T and then the direction vector 3, 2, negative 1. I'll distribute the T through. So 2, 2.4, 3.5 plus 3T 2t, negative t, and then I'll add these two vectors together. So when we add two vectors, we just add their components. So 2 plus 3t gives me 2 plus 3t. Uh, 2.4 plus 2t, and then 3.5 uh, minus t. So this is the vector equation of the line. Of course, t here is an element of the real numbers, which means that if we start plugging in all the different values of t in here, we will draw the line. Now, the, that's the vector equation of the line. I also need the parametric equation. So the parametric equation is very easy to get. All you have to do to do the parametric equation, the equation is just write down x equals y equals z equals, and x will be the x component, uh, y will be the y component, and z will be the z component. So there are your parametric equations, and that's it, we're done. Find again the vector equation and parametric equations for the line through a point. So it's number four. Find the vector equation of the line through a point. So they give you a point again, that's good. The point that they give you is the point um, 0, 14, negative 10. So the point 
is 0, 14, negative 10. And then they say um, it's parallel to the line. And then they give you the um, parametric equation of another line. So x is negative 1 plus 2t. And y is 6 minus 3t. And z is 3 plus 9t. So remember, all we need to figure out the um, vector equation of a line is r naught which is a point on the line converted to a vector, so we already have that. Okay, so we can use that. All we need now is the direction of the line. And if we're going to be parallel to this line, then we could just be pointing in the same direction as this line. So what is the direction of this line? So just remember where these come from, right? Remember, this is a separate line than that line. They're not the same lines. They're pointing in the same direction, but they're not the same line. So where do we get the direction from? <clears throat> well, when you look at the parametric equations, it's going to be the coefficients of in front of the t. If we create a vector, v, over here, and it's 2, negative 3, 9, then it will point in the same direction as this one. Now, just to reiterate, if I were to take this back and try and rewrite this as a line in vector, um, the vector equation, um, I have negative 1 plus 2t, 6 minus 3t, 3 plus 9t. And then what I could do is I could split that up, negative 1, 6, 3, plus um, 2t minus 3t, 9t. And then negative 1, 6, 3, plus factor a t out, t, 2, negative 3, 9. So this line right here from these parametric equations, if we switch it back to the vector equation, it would be this. Well, this. But, uh, but notice that if we decompose this and go backwards, this right here, 2, negative 3, 9, is the direction vector. This is like the v. So that's why all we have to do is look at these numbers. And so we've got everything we need. We just write down r, uh, oops, r of t equals our um, point converted to a vector plus t times 2, negative 3, 9. And then put everything together. Uh, t times 2 is 2t. Add 0 to it, we just get 2t. Um, t times negative 3 is negative 3t. Add 14, so 14 minus 3t. And then uh, t times 9 is 9t, and then subtract 10. So I'm going to go, I'll go negative 10 plus 9t. That is the vector equation of the line that is parallel to this line and runs through that point. Of course, t here, <coughs> again, is an element of the real numbers. All right, now the parametric equations of this line are going to be just the x, y, and z component respectively. So the parametric equations are x is 2t, y is 14 minus 3t, and z is uh, negative 10 plus 9t. So if we come back and we, we compare it, okay, let me compare it over here to this. We had, this was the line that we had to be parallel to. Notice that um, this line and this line, two different lines, uh, they have something in common, right? They have the 2t, negative 3t, and 9t. That's because they're parallel. <clears throat> the only difference is this negative 1, 6, 3. That's a point that lives on this line, and that point does not necessarily live on this line. So. Uh, 2, 14, negative 10 lives on that line, which, uh, I'm sorry, not 2, there's a 0 next to this. Uh, 0, 14, negative 10 lives on that line. And this, that point does not live here. So you can see that these are two different lines. They're just uh, pointed in the same direction. Okay, so that's uh, 
got number one, three, four, let's see, five. Same thing. Find the vector equation of the line through the point. So they give you a point again, 106. And perpendicular to the plane, so perpendicular to the plane, um, x plus 3y plus z equals 5. Make sure I got that right. Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> we have... Let's try and draw a picture three-dimensionally. We have a plane, right? Sheet of paper here. We have a plane sitting there in space. And we have a point sitting in space somewhere, wherever it is. And what we're trying to do is find the vector equation of the line that uh, goes through that point but is perpendicular to this plane. So imagine, again, we have this plane sitting in space, and we have some points sitting there, what we need to do is imagine dropping straight down to this plane through with a line that runs perpendicular to this plane, trying to find the, um, the vector equation of that. So um, let me move that point just a little bit so it makes a little more sense. You know, I could have, I could have a line that goes like this, punches through here, and then keeps going. But obviously that line would not be um, perpendicular to the plane. I could have a line that goes like this, punches through here, again, would not be perpendicular plane. I'm trying to find the line that goes through here, punches through, keeps going, and is perpendicular to this, to this plane. So what we notice is that <clears throat> the... Um, the, the, we have a point, right? So we have a point on the line. That's good. All we need is the direction. So this blue, this blue uh, segment here, the direction of that, right? The direction of that, I could call my V. That direction is parallel to the normal vector that comes out of the plane. So remember that all planes have a normal vector which is a vector that points out of the plane, right? Runs uh, perpendicular to it. And since um, this normal vector is perpendicular and the direction of our line needs to be perpendicular to the plane, I can actually use this normal vector as my V. So if I let my V be the normal vector, <clears throat> then I have the direction. The only question that remains is what is the normal vector of this plane? And that's easy to do because the normal vector, if we have the equation of the plane written as follows, the normal vector is just the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables. So the normal vector of this plane is the vector 1, 3, 1. And therefore, okay, three dots means therefore. Therefore, I'm going to let my direction vector be the same vector, the direction vector of my line. And that way I'm running parallel to the normal, which is also perpendicular to the plane. So um, that should be all I need. Um, I'm gonna write down the direction or the uh, vector equation of the line. So I need my R naught, which is the point on the line converted to a vector, plus T times the direction vector, which is one, three, one. And then we can combine things together. So 1 plus uh, 1t, so 1 plus t. Uh, 0 plus 3t, so 3t. And then 6 plus uh, t, so 6 plus t. And then t, again, is a real number here. So that is, this right here is the vector equation of the line that runs through this point and is perpendicular to this plane. And uh, now I just want to get the parametric equations. So for the parametric equations, 1 plus t, uh, 3t, 6 plus t. Done. And that was number 5.
Okay, find for number seven, I believe, now we're doing seven. Number seven, find the parametric equations and symmetric equations. So I want the parametric equations and symmetric. Of line <clears throat> through two points, through the point, or through the two points, uh, zero, one half, one, and the other point, two, one, negative three. So sitting here in three-dimensional space, I've got some points, 0, 1, half, 1. So some point here. I've got uh, 2, 1, negative 3. So I've got, I've got a line that goes through these two points. And I need to come up with the parametric and symmetric equations. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first try and find the vector equation. Okay, so we need a point on the line. We actually have two points, right? This is the point 0, 1, half, 1. This is the point 2, 1, negative 3. And so uh, I, I need one of those points. I can use either one. So I'm going to use this one because it doesn't have any fractions. So I'm going to let my r naught vector be the vector 2, 1, negative 3. And then the only thing left is to find a direction, the direction of this line. And when it comes to the direction, it's a vector that, that, that points the same direction as this line. I can simply take the vector that goes from this point to this point, or the other direction. It can go the other way, too. But I'm just going to pick that one. I'm going to call that one V. So what is V? Well, V is going to be, we, we know how to do this. We're trying to get the vector from this point to this point. We take 0, we subtract 2, negative 2. We take 1 half, we subtract 1, we get negative 1 half. And we take 1 and we subtract negative 3, which seems adding 3, we get 4. So there's your direction. So now we can put it together and we can get our vector equation. So r of t is equal to, let's see, I wonder how fast you can do this. Uh, remember, it's going to be r naught, which is this, uh, plus t times this. So if we multiply this by t, I'm just going to get little t's in there. And then when we add these two together, we get 2 plus this, so 2 minus 2t. Two and then we get 1 and then this, so 1 minus 1 half t. And then negative 3 plus that, so negative 3 plus 4t. So there's the vector equation of the line. <coughs> And I need uh, parametric equations. So we've done this already. I'll write them down. x will be 2 minus 2t. Two uh, y will be um, 1 minus a half t. And z will be negative 3 plus 4t. There we go. So there's your parametric equations. So vector equation of the line, uh, parametric equation of the line, and now we need the symmetric equations. So to do the symmetric equations, all we do is take each of these and solve them for t. So if I take this and solve it for t, let's see, I'll move, uh, it depends on how you want to do this. I'm going to move the, the positive, uh, the 2 to the other side, and then I'm going to divide by negative 2. So when I divide by negative 2, I get negative 1 half x. So divide that by negative 2, divide that by negative 2, I get plus 1 equals t. All right, now I'm just going to save that for now. Same thing here, I'm going to solve for, um, 
for t, so I'm going to get y minus 1 equals negative 1 half t. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2, so negative 2y, two um, and then negative 2 here is positive 2 equals 2. And then I'm going to solve this one for t. So z plus 3 equals 4t. Divide by 4, we get uh, 1 fourth t plus 3 fourths equals t. So since this equals t, this equals t, this equals t, then what I do for my symmetric equations is I write down negative 1 half x plus 1 must equal this, which is negative 2y plus 2, which uh, must equal 1 fourth. Oops, uh, this should have been, hold on, z, oops. 1 fourth z plus 3 fourths. So the, these are, uh, this is your symmetric equation right here. And that's number 7. <clears throat> Yeah, my answer looks a little different than the answer in the back of the book, but it's correct. It's the, it's the right answer. Okay. Number... What do we have next? Number eight. Same thing, same instructions. Um, find the parametric and symmetric equations of the line through the point 2, 1, 0. So you're given a point... 2, 1, 0, and it's perpendicular to i plus j and perpendicular to j plus k. Hmm. Okay. So what is i plus j? i plus j is just the vector 1, 1, 0. And j plus k is the vector 0, 1, 1. So what I need um, to find the vector equation of the line, right, is this. I need a point, which I've got, right? So I know that r of t so far is going to be 2, 1, 0. It's the point on the line converted to a vector, plus t times, now I just need to know what v is. v is the direction of the line. Well, this line, okay, has to be perpendicular to this and perpendicular to this. So I need to find a direction, right? We've got, we've got two vectors sitting out here. i plus j is sitting there. We've got um, j plus k, which is sitting there. We can put them tail to tail like this. So wherever they are, they're sitting out in space, right? My line needs to run perpendicular to both of these. So I need to be perpendicular to both of these vectors at the same time. Well, that's, that's the value of the cross product, right? If I, if I give you two vectors and, I, and we are asked to uh, get the cross product, when we cross these two vectors, let's say I cross this vector into this vector, then the right-hand rule I'll have a vector that's coming out towards us here, and that vector will run perpendicular to both vectors. All right, so if I'm trying to find a vector, v, that's perpendicular to these two vectors, all I'm going to do is cross these two vectors. That answer is perpendicular to both, which would be a perfect candidate for v. So I'm going to let v be equal to um, 1, 1, 0 crossed with 0, 1, 1. And let's go ahead and do that cross product. Now, I, I wrote them vertically here, so it'll be a little easier for us to do. If I'm trying to find the i component, cover up the i. OK, 1 times 1 is 1. Take away 0, so I just get 1. Um, cover up the middle. We've got 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, take away 0, and then subtract that. So it's going to be negative 1. And then if we're trying to get the last piece, cover this up. 1 times 1 is 1. Uh, take away 0, so 1. So that's, that's going to be our V. So we come back over here. 
two one zero plus t times v, but v I just found was this. So I'm going to multiply t through to each of those. So t uh, negative t t, and then add together we get two plus t, uh, one minus t, and just t itself. So the, um, that's the vector equation of the line. The, uh, the parametric equations are 2 plus t for x, y is 1 minus t, z is just t itself. And now to get my symmetric equations, I just solve each of the parametric equations for t. So solve this one for t, I get x minus 2 equals t. Solve this for t, um, the t to the left and the y to the right, 1 minus y. Solve that for t, it already is t, so z. So I hope I didn't do that too fast. Just solve each of these for t, set them equal to each other, you should get that. And that was number 8, just verify here. Parametric 2, 1 minus t, t, x minus 2, yes, negative y, 1, z is, yes, okay, we're good. All right, that's number 8. Let's take a look at number 10. Same instructions, find the parametric and symmetric equations for the line that, uh, let's see what information they give us. The line of intersection of the planes x plus 2y plus 3z, x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1, and x minus y plus z equals 1, x minus y plus z equals 1. All right, so we've got two planes sitting out here in space, All right, we've got two planes Let's say it's this wall in this plane. And I'm trying to find the vector equation of the line of intersection. So here's where they hit each other, right? And imagine this line goes forever in each direction. So what I need is a point, right? So I need a point that lives on this line, any point I can find. And then I need a direction vector. So I need some vector that points either out in this direction or this direction, doesn't matter. So let's start with the point. <clears throat> How can we get the point? Well, we just need to find, right? We need to find a point, an x, a y, and a z, which uh, satisfies both of these equations at the same time. So what we can do is we can just kind of pick something and, and guess because we have two equations and we have three variables. So one of these variables is kind of free. We can let it be whatever we want. Um, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let uh, z be zero. I'm gonna see if I let this z be zero, if I can find x and y. So if z is zero, let's rewrite the equations. x plus two y equals one. And then over here, x minus y equals one. So is it possible for me to solve this system of linear equations. So depending on how you feel about this and what you've seen in college algebra or wherever, um, there's different ways to solve these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve by elimination. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. And then I'm going to add these two rows together. So if I add down, see this is going to make my x's go away. x goes away. Um, I get 3y equals 0, which means y is 0. Okay, so if y is 0, so what I've done is I've let z be 0. When that happens, that means y has to be 0. And if y is 0, I can go back to um, any of these equations. So I'll just go right to this equation. I'll replace y with 0. I get x minus 0 equals 1, which means x is 1. So according to what I've done here, the point 1, 0, 0 should live on, that, live on both planes. So let's just check it. If I plug in 1, 0, 0, is that true? Yes. 
If I plug in one, zero, zero, is that true? Yes. So that point lives on, on the line of intersection of those two planes. So I've, I'm starting to get the things I need. Um, from here I can rewrite R naught is the vector one, zero, zero. So I'm converting that point to a vector. And now all I need is the direction. So I need the red, the red part, right? So remember from class that if we have two planes that intersect, then I can imagine the normals for each of these planes are perpendicular to the planes, right? So this plane has a normal vector. This plane has a normal vector. And if I take those two normal vectors and I cross them, right? So the normal here and the normal here, if I cross those two, I'll have a vector that's going to stick out and it will actually run parallel to the line of intersection. So what I need to do to find V is I need to take the cross product of the two normal vectors. So I'll say normal 1 and normal 2. So this is the first plane. What is the normal vector for this plane? Well, you just look at the coefficients. The normal for the first plane is uh, 1, 2, 3. And then the normal vector for this plane, which I'll call n2, are the coefficients here, 1, negative 1, and 1. So if I cross these two vectors, so normal um, 1 crossed with normal 2, that'll be our v. Um, let me actually write these down vertically so it'll be a little easier for me to do. And yeah, I know what I'm doing here. Okay, so uh, this v that we're getting, I uh, cover up the i, right, and I do 2, and then take away negative 3, which is the same as adding 3, so 2 plus 3 is 5, and then I cover up the middle, I've got 1, take away 3 is negative 2, but then subtract it, so 2, and then cover up the last part, we've got negative 1, take away 2 is negative 3. So that should be the direction vector that we use for our, our line. So we're ready. Put it together. R of T equals R naught plus T V, which is R naught was uh, 1, 0, 0, plus T times our direction vector, 5, 2, negative 3. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll just, I'll just put it all together right now. So we have uh, 1 plus 5T, 2T, negative 3t. t is a real number. This should draw the line that is the intersection of those two planes. What number was this? 10? All right, now the uh, Parametric equations are here. Let me, so there's your parametric equations. Let me solve these. Um, if I take this, solve it for t, I get x minus 1 over 5 equals t. I did this one a little different. Instead of writing, um, instead of writing x minus 1 equals 5t, and then dividing by 5 and putting 1 fifth x minus 1 fifth. I just left the 5 on the bottom of everything. The book does that a lot. Over here, um, y over 2 is t. And over here, um, negative z over 3 is t. So if you set this equal to this equal to this, there, there's your symmetric equation. <clears throat> All right. That's it for 10. How am I doing on time here? 45, so let's see what else I have to do. Okay. Let's do 12. Twelve says. 
is the line through these points. So let me write down the points. You have a line. It goes through the point negative 2, 4, 0 and the point 1, 1, 1. And then we have another line and it goes through the points 2, 3, 4 and 3, negative 1, negative 8. Let me just make sure I copy that down right. Okay, so we have two lines here, right? And the first line goes through these two points. So let's just, let's just make these points up. I don't feel like drawing it accurately. So um, we have two points, right? We'll call this um, L1. Okay, so it, it continues forever. And then we have another line which goes through these two points. I don't know where they are, so I'm just going to just kind of make them up. I don't know. There we go. And it continues forever. Right? And the question is, is the line through these two points, L1, here's L2. So this is L1 here through those two, and this is L2. Um, is the line through these two points perpendicular to the line through these two points? So how do we determine this? Well, one, one thing we could do is use the fact that the, um, if we take two vectors, right, we can tell if they're uh, perpendicular to each other pretty easily. All we do is take the dot product. If the dot product is zero, then they're perpendicular. If the dot product is not zero, then it's not, they're not perpendicular. So I, I need to know what the directions of these lines are. If I come in here and I say, all right, let me, uh, let me find the direction of this line. I can just make a vector that connects those two points. I'll call that V1, or sorry, let's make it V2. That's the direction of the second line. And if I do the vector here to here, I call that V1, that's the direction of that line. And if I just bring these two together and take the dot product, I'll know whether or not they're perpendicular. So how do we get V1 and V2? This is pretty straightforward. So for um, L1 to find V1, we just need a vector connecting these two points. So I'm gonna go from here to here. So one take away negative two is three. Uh, one take away four is negative three. One take away zero is one. Now the second direction vector connects these two. So three minus two is one. Negative one minus three is negative four. And negative eight minus four is negative 12. Now I'm gonna check what's V1 dotted with V2. Well, that's uh, three times one is three plus negative three times negative four is positive 12. And then um, negative one minus 12, that's um, negative one times, ne ah, blah, 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 blah. sorry, one times negative 12 is negative 12. Um, these cancel, we just get three there, but that is not zero. So therefore, they are not perpendicular to one another. So that was 12. All right, so number 13 is, seems, part A seems pretty simple. Part B is the more interesting part. All right, so for 13, they give you um, 
they say find the symmetric equations for the line through the point 1, negative 5, 6 and is parallel to the vector negative 1 to negative 3. So find the symmetric equations for this. Well, that's pretty easy because in order to find the, the vector equation of a line, we need a point in a direction, which we have right here. So r of t should be equal to the vector 1, negative 5, 6, uh, plus t times the direction of the line. So since it's parallel to, uh, to that vector, it's, we're just going to use that vector itself as the direction. So 2, negative 3, which is um, 1 minus t, negative 5 plus 2t, and 6 minus 3t. So that's the vector equation. We want the symmetric equation. So we have to now go to uh, the parametric equations. x is 1 minus t. Uh, y is negative 5 plus 2t. And z is 6 minus 3t. And then finally, solving each of these for t, you get uh, uh, what is it? 1 minus x is t on that one. Solve this for t, you get uh, y plus 5 over 2 is t. And then on this one, you get uh, z minus 6 over negative 3 is t. So the symmetric equations are 1 minus x equals y plus 5 over 2, which equals z minus 6 over negative 3. So that's what they wanted. For the first part, that's only 13 uh, part A. And now what we need is to answer part B, which is more interesting. Part B says, find the points in which the required line from part A intersects the coordinate planes. So there's a line sitting out here in three-dimensional space and we're trying to figure out where this line hits the coordinate planes. So imagine we have our standard x, y, z, right? And we've got some line arbitrarily drawn through here in three-dimensional space. And it hits the ground, the xy plane somewhere. I'm just going to kind of guess here. It hits the ground there. Um, it hits the yz plane somewhere. And then it hits this wall, the xz plane somewhere. I don't know. I, we need to find out where those points are. So the, the question they're asking is when does this line hit the xy plane? When does it hit the yz plane? When does it hit the xz plane? Or at what point does it hit? So let's start with trying to figure out, um, uh, I think I'll erase this. So I want to know when does this r of t hit or intersect let's, let's start with the xy plane well the xy plane is another way of saying um, all the points where z are zero right when you're on the xy plane z is zero so what that tells me is that <clears throat> where, when this line right here hits the xy plane, <clears throat> I know the z value, the z component of the vector must be zero. I know that this must be zero. So this implies that the um, 6 minus 3t must be equal to zero, right? The z is zero, so 
that must be true, which means that 6 equals 3t, which means that t must equal 2. So at t equals 2 is where it happens, or is when it happens. So what I need to do is come back over to this and figure out where I am at 2. So plug 2 into the whole thing. And I get uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Uh, negative 5 plus 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. And then here we already know that when I plug 2 in, I get 0. And now I convert that to a point, And that's going to be the point negative 1, negative 1, 0. So that, at that point is where my line would punch through the xy plane. Now we want to do the same thing again, but now we want to do it for the y. Let's do the, let's do the yz plane next. Okay, for the yz plane, what's the, what's the um, restriction? If we're on the yz plane, x must be 0 this time. And then we go back and we say, all right, well, if x must be 0, then the x component right here on our line must be 0. So 1 minus t must be 0 which means t must be equal to 1. And so we come back and we say, all right, well, let's just plug 1 in and see where we are. So when we plug in 1, we get 0. We kind of knew that. Plug in 1 here, we get negative 3. And then we plug in 1 here, and we get 3. Convert that to a point, and we get 0, negative 3, 3. So our line should punch through the yz plane at that point, 0, negative 3, 3. And then finally, if we want to find out where it goes through the xz plane, we know in that case y must be 0. And that means that um, negative 5 plus 2t must be 0. And then that means that t must be 5 halves. And then we plug 5 halves in. And that won't be as fun, but let's do it. Uh, 1 take away 5 halves is negative 3 halves. We already know what happens to the y component, 0. Um, 6 minus uh, 3 times 5 halves. This is not fun. Uh, this is 15 halves, so 6 minus 15 halves. That's the same as 12 halves, so negative 3 halves, right in here, negative 3 halves. That should, oh, and then convert it to a point, negative 3 halves, 0, negative 3 halves, that point. Let me double check this, this is number 13, yeah, looks good. Okay, I think that's enough on time here for this one. Um, where's my little sheet? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So I've done 13. I still have some more to go here, so, but I gotta stop for right now.